Hi, uh, I'm Jean Poisson, Board Evaluation. Um, I've been running finance forces all over the world now uh, for the last 20 years or so. And people often ask me, Jean, is there a quick 30 second way of actually assessing a business? Of course there isn't. So, but what I'll propose to you is a quick shortcut that, that you might find helpful. And I think to position this clip, you have to appreciate when we get to that stage, we've gone through the business, we've assessed the business, we know what it's about, we understand the industry. And there's also an important caveat in the sense that the business has not changed. It's selling roughly the same things to the same kind of people, and that's kind of important. So with that in mind, we've gone through the accounts, unearthed nothing sort of horrific or spectacular. So with that in mind, let's proceed. So what we have here is a basic income statement of profit and loss of a business. What you expect to see is revenue sales going up to a level that you can understand. As your cost of goods or cost of manufacture or cost of services go up, typically, if possible, and I appreciate it's not always possible, but by and large, you put up the cost to your clients. So what that means is the gross profit percentage or the gross profit margin, which is gross profit expressed as a percentage of revenue, year on year doesn't change much. Okay, change by very, very small minute amounts being mathematics. Likewise, as all your overheads go up, at least by inflation and sometimes more, you pass it on to your client through, through your prices. So this means that like the gross profit, the operating profit margin likewise doesn't change from year to year, or not by much. And by that we mean operating profit as a percentage of revenue, as a percentage of sales. Finance costs or interest implies you've borrowed some money. And uh, we'll come on that in a bit. That gives you profit before tax and then taxation. Well, obviously all countries vary in their taxation regime. But because tax is roughly the same percentage every year, and if your borrowings haven't changed too much, for the same rationale as the above two, the profit after tax or the net profit percentage, and again expressed as a percentage of revenue, typically would not change by much every year, unless there had been some changes in the business. So we have a profit. Well, good, bad? Well, good or bad in respect of what? Visualizing a balance sheet, and of course the real balance sheets are not presented in this format. This is for purposes of illustration. We have shareholders' funds, which is what the shareholders have put in, plus profit which they've kept back over the years. There could be long-term liabilities, long-term borrowings, and there could be others. And there could also, or there more likely to be some current liabilities, uh, small uh, short-term borrowings, trade suppliers, things like that. That's basically where, what funds a business. And those funds will be reinvested in fixed assets, property, computer equipment, airline, for example, aircraft for an airline company. And they would also have inventories and similar things if, uh, for, uh, uh, for most businesses. So when we look at the profit, we ask the question, well, profit, good or bad, for whom? And, and I guess one of our starting points has to be the owners, the shareholders. So in the first instance, the shareholders are going to say, this is our capital. This is what belongs to us. And it's made up typically of two tranches, uh, the share capital which they physically invested and profits which the company possibly would have kept back over the years. So sometimes this is called net asset value. Sometimes this is called total equity. So I divide the profit after tax by this to give me what's called the return on equity. So the owners take a view as to what return they've had on their business. But then they further say, hang on a second here. Not only as a shareholder you have my money, you've also borrowed money. And debt is just another form of capital. So let me judge your performance on the total capital that you have, which is a combination of the shareholder's capital and monies that you may have borrowed. There are wider issues here, but we're keeping it simple for the time being. And we call this return on capital employed, which is the profit on all the capital at the disposal of the business. And that gives you an inkling as to how well the company is actually using its capital. So, you borrowed money. How much? Well, how much vis-a-vis -vis what? And one expression of debt is what we call gearing or financial leverage. 
we compare the total debt against the equity of the company, meaning how much have you the owners put in and how much have you borrowed. We call this gearing. Now, th there's no magic figure here. I think what matters is, do we understand why that business is borrowing? Can we validate the presence of borrowings in that business? And unless you've had a major acquisition, a restructure, something extraordinary, typically businesses borrow for three main reasons. One, is there a loss? If there's a loss, it implies very simply expenses bigger than revenue, someone has to fund that. Or capital expenditure. Capital expenditure meaning we need to replace fixed assets. And therefore we ask the questions, what have you bought? Why have you bought? but also how well you are using those assets. And one measurement, there are a few others, we call return on assets, which, which means just that, which is profit divided by total assets. How well are you utilizing the assets of the business? Another question we would also ask, which would possibly necessitate borrowings, is what we call working capital. Let's say we're dealing with a buy and sell business. It's probably easier to visualize. Uh, I buy my stock in my inventories today and my stock in my inventories sit on my shelves for about 30 days. Uh, I make a sale and I give my debtors, my trade payables, 30 days to pay me. I'm out of cash for 60 days from the time I made the purchase to the time I physically get cash from my client. My suppliers will come in. They might give me 30 day credit or 40 day credit. But for most businesses, it creates an imbalance. I am out of cash for about 60, but I'm getting finance for about, say, 20, 25 or 30. I have what's called a working capital gap. And this would require funding as well. So we've established the presence of borrowings. I understand why you borrowed. And I guess the next question we have to ask ourselves is, can this business afford those borrowings? Now, there are, two, there are a number of ways of looking at this. Going back to the profit and loss income statement, I have to pay the bank interest or finance cost. How many times is that covered by the profit? At least is my interest safe on that level of performance for the year? That's one way of looking at it. A better way would be to look at the cash flow of the business. Essentially, we are saying, let me look at all the cash in during a year and all the cash out during the year. What is driving cash? What is absorbing cash? and hopefully in is bigger than out. And if not, why and why are you funding yourself? Because it is cash flow that repays debt, absolutely nothing else. And we call this liquidity. And the cash flow of the business not only will support that the debt is capable of being supported, but also gives you a strong understanding of the overall cash position of the business. So, uh, so in summary, if you were to write a financial report on a business, you might find the following structure and template very, very helpful. And we've seen those themes already in this very, very short clip. Growth, is the company growing? Increase in revenue, how has the company increased? Is that growth sustainable? Can they keep growing like that? Profitability, is the company profitable? And we measure those in the first instance of our margins. We looked at gross profit margin, we looked at operating profit margin, we looked at net profit margin, and we concurred Year on year, they shouldn't change by much. So that's one aspect, the margins of profitability. The second aspect is that profit is good for whom and vis-a-vis -vis what? Well, one first question is for the shareholders to ask, how well are you making a capital work? We call this return on equity, which is profit divided by shareholders' funds. The shareholders are asking a very valid question. Are you making a decent enough return on our investment? But then a second question is posed in that, hang on a second here, not only you have our capital, you've also borrowed money, chances are. So I will judge your profit performance on all the capital at your disposal. And we call this return on capital employed, which is a combination of what we've put in, i.e. equity, plus debt, what you may have borrowed. And we call this return, again, on, on, on capital employed. So profitability has two strands, margins and utilization of capital or shareholders and all providers of capital which will be dead people. So a company has borrowed money. Why could it have borrowed money? Well, one area we call efficiency. 
i.e. the chances are it's invested in fixed assets. It's invested in assets. How well are you utilizing the assets at your disposal? And one measurement is return on assets. The second line of inquiry is ap apropos working capital, which we've seen already. Is there a working capital gap? And if there is, is it satisfactory? And does it need to be financed? And those, those, those two lines of inquiry talk to us about efficiency. So there has been borrowing. Well, this is what we, ref we refer to as solvency. How much have you borrowed? No magic figure. We call this gearing or sometimes financial leverage. Uh, why have we borrowed? Explained by a loss and or working capital and or acquisition of fixed assets or assets, capital expenditure. And we, have a, and we seek to understand the presence of these borrowings. Next key question, can the company afford these borrowings? Only cash flow will tell us that. And this is where liquidity comes in, where we look at the entire cash performance over a year and we look put very simply at cash in and cash out. And hopefully cash in should be bigger than cash out. If not, why not? And how is the company actually funding its, its business on a year-by-year -year basis? And finally, you may be looking at that business as an investor and the last key point, I guess, is investment attractiveness, i.e., is that company worth investing in, given all the parameters that you've just seen. Et voilà, doesn't take long, does it?